This video is sponsored by Skillshare, the online learning community. With that said, let's get into the character tier list. What characters are the strongest and what characters are the weakest in all of Don't Starve Together in solo play? And I'm only going to be judging these based off how like max skilled work. So if I were to train a robot and it played the game perfectly, how good the character would be if that robot was playing it. So first off, I'll start off with my buddy Maxwell here. So we'll put Maxwell up in A tier. Maxwell can summon shadow puppets that will help him break rocks and chop trees and fight. Uh, he has 75 max HP, which is his downside. He's very low max HP. And he also has a sanity restore on its own over time. So he has a very high uh, passive sanity boost. So overall, he is generally a very good character, but he's still not the best of the best characters because those would go in the S tier here, mostly due to his combat abilities, which are generally weaker than most other characters. Next up, we'll do Winona. So I'm gonna put Winona right here in B tier. So Winona can build catapults and spotlights, and she also has her trusty tape to repair things specifically clothing items and things that you could repair with a sewing kit. Generally, her catapults are very useful if you know how to use them correctly. You can use them to build a hound farm using vargs, which will then also cause the generator to just be filled as long as you want it to be filled as you fill the generator with gems. So you can just keep the catapults going and then you can keep farming things there such as monster meat and hound's teeth. Generally though, she does not have many upsides and her upsides just aren't that strong compared to other characters. So we're putting her at the top of B tier rather than putting her in A tier or an S tier, or and she's not bad enough to put in C tier. Next up, we got WX78. So WX78 is actually going in A tier this time. So WX78 can be extremely strong in the right hands. He is absolutely the best runes rushing character. Uh, he can use gears that he comes across to make his stats higher. So he'll eat those and then he'll get really high max stats, like 400 max HP, just very strong stats. Although, his main upside is that he can get overcharged by being hit by lightning, which will make him run 50% faster, he'll be immune to the cold, and he'll also have a light bubble around him. So generally he has some very strong upsides. Now the reason why he's only in A tier and actually below Maxwell in this tier list is because it is so difficult to get overcharged while he is playing solo, and so generally He's just not as good as some of, say, for instance, the S tier characters could be on their own, even though he works very, very well in a group. Next up, we got Weber. So Weber's also going in A tier. Weber is a very different character. So uh, pigs and bunny men will attack him, which are normally neutral mobs that the player can actually ally. And he can actually ally with spiders, and spiders are neutral to him, including things like spider queens, spider guardians, uh, all the different types of spiders down in the caves, and he can actually tame them, all of them except Spider Queen, so he can give them meat and they'll be his friends. So with Weber, the main upside is that he can start wars between the spiders, so if he goes and puts down 10 spider dens and he just has one side that he feeds and has them attack the other side, spiders automatically come to the aid of other spiders that are getting attacked. So this will create a two war front where there are spiders just on both sides and they will just all kill each other and he can take the meat, the silk, the spider glands and he can just leave without having to really do any work on his part. He just gets a lot of resources for absolutely free and he can be pretty strong. Although he's not very good in direct combat and spiders are generally a worse ally to have for fighting or anything else than bunnymen or pigmen would be. So that's why he can't really make it up there into the S tier. Even though he generally has a pretty strong upside, his downside's also pretty bad. I should also say he can eat monster meat without any penalties, which is another pretty nice upside he has. Next up, we will take Willow. So Willow's main upside is that she has her trusty bear Bernie with her that can be used while she is insane to fight mobs and shadow creatures. So Bernie can be pretty strong, although he isn't all that strong because his attack speed isn't very fast, although he does quite a bit of damage and he can't fight many mobs at once. So 
in general, that is her main upside, that she has her Bernie that helps her out. She also has a whole bunch of other just tiny, tiny upside just all over the place, like she can extinguish smoldering without taking any damage and she extinguishes it faster. Putting fuel in the fire, she will actually add more fuel than a normal character would. She gains sanity back from fire, she's immune to overheating, immune to fire, uh, and then cold hurts her a little bit worse. She's also kind of just very similar to Wendy, who has a very similar ability that's actually better. Next up, we got Wes. So Wes, I mean, obviously going in F tier. So Wes is the on-purpose challenge character. His stats are lower, he has no upside, he does less damage. In general, you play him if you're wanting to have a more challenging experience, although I still wouldn't just because I find his character very boring to play. Next up, we got Wilson. So Wilson has always been the very basic character, so he was the starter character and the first Don't Starve. And just generally, he has only one upside, so he can grow a beard, which will help you in winter with insulation, and then you can also shave it to get beard hair, which can be useful to build a meat effigy. I still wouldn't recommend doing it, but it is something you can do. And he has no downside, so he's just very plain. And we're just putting him in C tier. So over time, the characters have gotten quite a bit stronger overall. It used to be that he was the exact middle of the pack, but you can see already that we have a lot of characters up here, only one character below him. So generally, he's not as strong as the other characters as he used to be, but I mean, he's still not really a bad choice. And we're gonna put Wigfrid right up here. So Wigfrid is another fairly strong character. So Wigfrid has a damage modifier of 1.25 times, and she also gets a damage resistance 25%, even without any armor. She can build her battle helmet on battle spear. She can leech health and sanity off of mobs. And generally, she just is a decently strong character. Now, if that was all there was to her, she would actually be a lot higher up on the tier list, but she can only eat meat, which locks her off from some useful recipes and some useful food, such as blue mushrooms, which makes it so that it's very hard as her to rush the ruins and makes her a lot weaker. In general, not a very weak character, but mostly the issue with Wigfrid is she has a direct competitor, Wolfgang, who has basically just higher stats than her in all the areas. So Wigfrid can often be referred to as the helmet maker just because Wolfgang cannot make helmets and her helmets are extremely good. Okay, so next up, we're gonna go with Worley. So Worley is going in F tier right below Wes. So Worley, he has a pretty strong upside. So he can build certain foods that will increase your stats, such as damage and things like that. But the issue with Worley is he can only eat crockpot recipes. And then on top of that, with him only eating crockpot recipes, if he eats the same one over and over again within like a couple of days, it's really, really bad for him because like each time he eats it, it becomes less potent. So it's just less strong, that recipe. So we can't keep using the really strong recipes repeatedly. And then on top of that, he also has his hunger drain faster. So it becomes even more of an issue. It just generally, it's hard to keep his hunger up. His upside, you need to build farms for, which is generally not a very strong idea. And in solo play, he's just not strong at all. In solo play, he just doesn't work well. He's more of a team player. Before we talk about our next character, Wormwood, I've got to talk with you about Skillshare, the online learning community. Skillshare is a huge online community where you can learn basically any skill from a top expert. You can learn almost anything here super fast, like how to use Premiere Pro, which I used to edit my videos. These guys are like a thousand times better at editing than I am or you can learn how to code in C++ and Lua, which Don't Starve Together is coded in. So if you wanted to make a mod for DST, this would be amazing. You can actually learn everything about how to make a video game here, from making the story, to composing the music, to creating pixel art, and coding the game. And it's not just creative stuff either. For instance, I can also learn sales techniques or how to make friends. Hmm, maybe then someone will play Don't Starve Together with me. So if you are a lifelong learner and want to learn that skill you've always wanted, the first 1,000 of you that click the link below can sign up for free for two months. 
and then it's less than 10 bucks a month after that. With that said, let's get back into the video. Wormwood. So Wormwood is also going down in F tier for solo play, and he will be right below Warly. So a lot of people are going to be very angry with me about this and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, so the issue with Wormwood and why he is going below Warly here is that he cannot heal using food. So that's his downside. He can't heal using foods. He has a whole bunch of really wacky random upsides. So he can like plant seeds without a farm plot. He can make living logs for some of his health. But all of that really doesn't matter in solo play just because of how his health works. So it basically makes it so he can't really fight any enemies because if he gets hit, it's going to take way too long to go heal that health up. Your actual best way to heal is literally to die and revive using a item to come back to life, such as the life-giving amulet. That's actually the fastest and most efficient way to get your health back. And seeing that compared to what the other characters have to get their health back, he's just really weak. And in general, he it's much, much easier to die as him compared to every other character in the game. So for solo play, I'm putting him as the worst character. Next up, we got Wirt. So Wirt is going to go down in D tier. So Wirt is actually pretty similar to Wilson, except she can also uh, use Merms to her advantage. So she can uh, she can ally with Merms to have them fight enemies for her. She can build a Merm King to build stronger Merms and just strengthen up all the Merms on the map and strengthen her up. So she'll actually have quite a bit better stats than normal but then you have to feed it, and she'll also run 30% faster on Marsh Turf. Also has an issue that pigs will attack her, although bunny men will not. She does have a clever disguise to get past this though. So the issue with Wirt, if you just heard that part I said before, you'd think she sounded actually decently strong. She's actually a vegan, so she can't eat the recipes with meat in them, and there's a lot of strong recipes with meat in them, so such as pierogi, it really helps heal your health up. And in general, she's just going to be weaker because it just really hinders her in terms of her healing capabilities and getting her hunger back up. And it just makes the game slow down a lot. She's obviously not, you know, like super bad, like some of these F tier characters are, but she's just not all that good due to that downside. Next up, we got Walter and Wobi. So Walter has a whole bunch of upside. So he gets a slingshot, which isn't very strong. He gets his buddy Wobi, which acts basically the same as Chester, except she can't be attacked. And he can also ride her to go really, really fast. This is dog Wobi. Generally, he's a decently strong character. That's why he's going up here in A tier, mostly due to the fact that Wobi can hold on to items for him and she won't die. So she's just in general, a very strong version of Chester and can be very useful. And Realistically, his downside is that his sanity gets hurt when he gets hit. Although with that, he also has another upside that negative insanity arrows do not affect him. So if you don't get hit, you won't go insane. So in general, he's just a really kind of wacky character that's in general pretty decently strong. Next up, we got Wendy. So Wendy is actually the character I would recommend for a new player to play when they come to this game because Wendy is easy to play and you'll get a lot out of her. So Wendy has her sister Abigail who died who she brings back and is a very strong helper. So she can attack hordes of mobs and clean them up very efficiently. She can help with killing bosses, although she'll normally uh, disappear part way through because she's just not all that strong for fighting bosses. And just in general, she's great for clearing out mobs, which are usually the things that newer players have issues with. But she isn't, you know, top of A tier type strength because her downside is that she only does 75% of a normal character's damage, so 0.75 times damage. So her direct damage is much weaker and this makes it hard to kill bosses, which really restricts her items and it really res restricts her self uh, protection. So in general, she's a pretty good character, although not one of the best characters. So next up, we got the like button. So obviously you should hit the like button because the YouTube algorithm likes it when you hit the like button. So you should definitely go and hit the like button right now if you've watched the video this far, and that'll help me out a lot. Thanks guys. Next up, we got Wartox. So Wartox is just blatantly the best character in the game, although he is also a DLC character, which I'm sure a lot of you probably don't like. 
So Wartox has a whole bunch of really strong abilities. So first off, he can heal just using a monster's soul. So any mob that he kills in the game, he will get a soul off of, and then he gets an extra 20 healing out of. So if he goes ahead and he punches, say, a butterfly or a rabbit, and he kills them and he takes their soul, he can get another 20 HP off of that which is very strong. And in team play, he can actually use that to heal all of his teammates around him too. So he's even stronger in team play, but we're talking about solo right now. He can also use souls to teleport anywhere on the screen that he can see. So just like the lazy explorer, he can just teleport anywhere on screen. And this also makes him the fastest character in the game. So very strong there. And then on top of that, he can also eat souls from the mobs. So he can use those to restore his hunger. Now his downside is that food is 50% as potent for him, so it's just generally not very strong for him to use, say for instance, crockpot recipes or any of that. I would just recommend that you really don't pick up food, not really much of it anyways, you could still pick up some, and you mostly just eat the souls, you heal using the souls, you teleport using the souls, and just everything using the souls. I also want to add here that he does have an extra downside in that cat coons, pigs, and bunnymen will all be aggressive to him and he has no way to tame them, which is a decently large downside. Wartox, very strong character, definitely one that you'd want to play if you are, especially if you're a very good player because then you'll get more souls faster with a very aggressive play style. And even if you're kind of a newer player, he would still be a very strong character. But once again, he is a DLC character. He costs money or spools, so most players don't even have access to him. Next up on the solo tier list, we are going to put Wolfgang. So Wolfgang is extremely strong in direct combat. So he can have up to two times damage, up to 33% damage resistance. Technically, it doesn't work the same way as Wigfrid's does. It's due to the way his health works. He can actually heal more off of certain foods due to the way his health works. He moves up to 20% faster, which makes it easier to kill monsters. And just in general, he is extremely strong in solo play just because he can take care of so many of those group challenges that are supposed to be in the game just on his own and get some access to some really strong items. He also can kind of just completely throw the, the whole balance tree into the air and just smash it because he can just go ahead and straight up, say for instance, run to the ruins with his two times damage multiplier and fight enemies that he really shouldn't be able to beat all that many of, and he'll just absolutely just destroy them, take all that gear and have really strong gear early on. So in general, Wolfgang, extremely powerful, mostly due to the speed boost of all things, and second off, due to that damage multiplier. In general, this is just the superior work version of Wigfrid, and I know most of the players in the game are Wigfrid mains, that is the most common uh, character to main. Wolfgang is basically the superior version of her if you've played the game for a while and are quite experienced. If you can keep your hunger under check, he's extremely strong. Now, Wolfgang's downside is supposed to be that he goes insane faster. He goes insane about 10% faster from Insanity Aras. The issue with that is that he kills monsters faster, so he actually goes insane slower, so his downside is kind of weird and doesn't really affect him. And you'll notice that with basically all of the S tier characters is they really have no downside. Wolfgang is actually technically the one exception to that though because he has his hunger drain significantly faster than other characters. That's his real downside and it's not even listed. So if he's in mighty form, it takes three times the amount of hunger that a normal character would. If he's in his normal form, he takes two times as much hunger as a normal character would. And in wimpy form, it's more along the normal lines, but you don't want to be in wimpy form anyways. Wickerbottom going right up in S tier here. So Wickerbottom is another very, very strong character. So she is extremely good in di indirect combat. So that can be very useful for killing certain bosses. It can be useful for killing most mobs using her on tentacles book, which will spawn some tentacles in, which are very spawn strong mobs that can generally kill most enemies. The only issue with this is that will make her go insane and those cannot assist her versus shadow creatures, which can only be killed directly. So with that, she generally has some issues with shadow creatures just because she's not very strong against them, but her upsides are just so massive that it doesn't really matter. She can cause all plants to respawn instantly using her applied horticulture book, which means she can just basically pull food from thin air. 
She can put all mobs to sleep in a one and a half screen radius using her Sleepy Time Stories book, which once again makes her very strong directly against mobs, but once again, also not shadow creatures. She can use the end is nigh to summon lightning, which in group play is great with WX78, but we're talking about solo play right now. And then she can also use her book Birds of the World to summon a whole bunch of birds. Usually then you will also use Sleepy Time Stories right afterwards, and you can just go ahead and you can kill the birds to gather yourself some food really quickly. Basically, Wicker Bottom just pulls food out of thin air at every corner, which is extremely strong, and she's also pretty good in indirect combat, and she also has some direct combat abilities, and she has very little downside. So her downside is that, say for instance, your food is turned yellow, so it's kind of spoiling, or it's red, so it's really spoiling, it will be even worse for her than it would be for a normal character. But once again, this is kind of countered out by the fact that she just pulls food out of thin air at every corner. And then her other downside is that she can't sleep, which I would actually recommend that you don't do anyways, usually because it's a huge time waste and you can restore your stats faster in other ways. So in general, I wouldn't recommend doing that anyways, and it's not really a downside. She also has another upside, a smaller upside, that she's really smart, so she starts off with a science app. So she'll start off with tier one science just at all times, so she can craft, say for instance, a backpack right off the bat. And then if she builds a tier one science machine, so just a normal science machine, not an alchemy engine, she can go ahead and build alchemy engine recipes, everything except for her on Tentacles book. So she gets a huge advantage there in early game also. And that's kind of the reason why she can make it up in here to S tier, because she doesn't really have a downside. Same with Wartox, same with Wolfgang. And for our last character, Woody. So Woody has a couple of forms he can turn into. He can turn into a were-beaver, a were-goose, and a were-moose. And each of these has their own purpose. So the were-moose is pretty strong, and it's good for battle. The were-goose is fast, so you can explore quickly with it and the were beaver is good for collecting resources. Now, in general, these are kind of hard to control and can generally be a nuisance, these forms, because of how easy they are to start, but they can also be very helpful in certain circumstances, such as the were goose makes you move really fast, which can be very useful. A big issue with this here is that you cannot say, for instance, collect items while doing this, so they aren't as useful as I would like them to be, but I mean, uh, he's still an A tier character, just because he has so many upsides there, and he doesn't really have many downsides. He also has a beard, which gives him insulation. He can tame, say for instance, pigmen and bunnymen, and they will actually stay with him longer because he's so charming. So he has a whole bunch of just really wacky upsides. Doesn't really have a downside other than that his forms are hard to control. And in general, he's a very good character. With that said, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Bye-bye, guys.